An official close to Vladimir Putin has tasked Russian scientists to find anti-aging remedies for the president, the Times publication reported. Vladimir Putin who will turn 72 in October, is known to be obsessed with anti-aging remedies. According to the Times, the Russian Ministry of Health has told local research institutes to report immediately on their anti-aging methods, including tackling cognitive and sensory disorders, cellular aging and osteoporosis and boosting immune systems. We were tasked to urgently send all our developments, and the letter arrived, let's say, today, but everything had to be sent yesterday, Russian Medusa website quoted one of the researchers as saying. It should be noted that many senior officials in the Russian government are around the same age as Putin. The average life expectancy for men in Russia is around 67. The best case scenario for the Ukrainian armed forces operation in the Kursk region is that Ukrainian forces will be able to contain Russia's advance in the Donbass until they achieve even small gains while holding the captured Russian territory with a sustainable military commitment, writes the American magazine Foreign Affairs. The offensive could also prompt changes in Western policy on the use of long-range strike weapons and inject much-needed energy into the thinking of Ukraine's allies about the way forward at this stage of the war, the publication says. It is also noted that the worst-case scenario is that in a few months Ukraine will lose significant tracts of land in the east and will not retain territory in Kursk that it could use as a bargaining chip. The offensive offers opportunities, but also carries significant risks and costs. In any case, Kiev hopes that the offensive in Kursk will spur a change in the perception that the war is on a negative trajectory, unlock additional material aid, and change Western restrictions on weapons, the magazine writes. It is noted that the Kursk operation will also force Moscow to think about the fact that Ukraine retains options and that the outcome of this war is still undetermined, although this offensive does not correct the current material imbalance in the war. The operation was well executed, quickly achieving a few limited but important objectives that would have made it an effective week-long raid. If it could have drawn significant Russian forces away from other fronts, the payoff would have been more than worth it. But so far, there is little evidence that this has been done. So far, Russia has pulled back from Zaporozhye and Kharkov while maintaining offensive operations around the eastern towns of Volodar, Pokrovsk, Toretsk and Kupiansk. Russia's response to the Kursk appears to represent an economy of force to deter an invasion as it continues to prioritize offensive operations in Donetsk. Moscow may be exercising some caution, recognizing that in past years, Ukraine has tended to launch attacks on multiple fronts. This may not be Ukraine's only planned offensive, the article says. It is noted that Ukrainian troops are currently digging in, in Russia and creating their own military administration in the region, intending to hold the Kursk cauldron for the foreseeable future. Much depends on how Moscow reacts. If Russian forces rush Ukrainian lines, Kiev could force Moscow to fight on its own terms by increasing pressure along the entire front. Kursk could weaken Russia's offensive power by taking the fight to Russian territory. Moscow could also feel compelled to create a significant operational reserve and deploy larger garrisons along its border. This would also reduce the combat power Russia could have to fight in Ukraine, the magazine writes. The publication added that Kiev will have to choose whether to hold on to what it has or invest more resources in the Kursk operation to force Russia to undertake a much larger effort to counter it. But the risks should not be underestimated. Some 1,360 Russian soldiers were killed during intense fighting over the past 24 hours, bringing the total number of Russia's military losses to 618,960 people since the start of Russia's full-fledged invasion of the country more than two years ago. The intense fighting on the front line took place across border areas of Sumy and Chernihiv regions, the general staff of Ukrainian armed forces reported on its Tuesday briefing. The most affected areas were the settlements of Karpovichy, Pokrovka, Porozok, Dmitrivka, Sopik, 
Bobolivka, Velika Pisarivka and Boyaro Lazachi, the general staff stated. A total of 175 combat clashes occurred along the front lines in Ukraine on September 2. The general staff also revealed Russia's heavy losses in terms of military equipment over the past day. Thus, defense forces of Ukraine destroyed 10 Russian tanks, 35 armored combat vehicles, 18 artillery systems, 36 operational tactical UAVs, 21 cruise missiles, 47 vehicles and fuel tanks, 9 special equipment during the hostilities yesterday. Russia has not revealed its combat losses in the war in Ukraine. However, according to General Staff of Ukrainian Armed Forces, Russia's combat losses amount to over 616,000 troops as of September 1st.